Uh, we were telling you every now and then about the Glenmark corn call and some of the takeaways were flashing for you. The stock has reacted very negatively. Yeah, stock has reacted negatively. I think the stock of the moment now is Page Industries. Uh, are now down 7% on that stock. Uh, so uh, a lot of uh, you know excess is uh, uh, getting corrected here. And the fact that you know the, the numbers had a lot of uh, one-offs and uh, the uh, you know the reported number obviously uh, concealed more than it revealed. Uh, that's that's the reason that you're seeing this kind of. Yeah, you know when you're stock. trading 60 times, you don't have any elbow room exactly. for such mistakes. Exactly. But uh, <coughs> just to put things into perspective, or just give the other side. Uh, I think Credit Suisse has said that uh, at, at the moment all the downgrades are over and they have a buy, but it's not a very tall price. It's 23,300. Mm -hmm. So about, uh, you know, 2-3% from here on is about all that they are expecting. But just to read one line from the Kotak note, uh, they say that the company did not clarify the exact manner in which the new accounting norms uh, resulted in the revenue gains in Q3. And that was the reason why, you know, there's a a bit of uh, sort of concern disbelief with regards to that, disbelief with regards to that. So devil was in the details, they say, in their note. But let's talk about Glenmark now because that stock is also tanking. Ekta joins in. She was listening into the conference call. Ekta, uh, more pricing pressure in the US markets is what the company talks about. Yes, uh, but that is something that they've said in the past, you know, and the numbers are largely in line with estimates. There were no sort of surprises which came in in the numbers this time round either. So maybe the conference call takeaways are a little bit on the negative side and that's probably weighing on the stock. So, for example, they did mention that, yes, the US pricing pressure is still challenging. It stands at around 8-odd percent, but it's come off around 1-2-odd to two -odd percent. Uh, they are rethinking their whole investment on the likes of a drug called Adver, which is an inhalation drug. Remember, just a couple of days ago, Myelin had launched this drug in the US market with a 70% discount. So companies such as Glenmark are now saying that it probably doesn't even make sense to de for them to enter a product which was earlier considered to be quite complex and, uh, you know, revenue generating in nature. Uh, the reason for the innovative bis business spin-off uh, spin is to basically generate value eventually. In the long term, they could look to get a new strategic partner. Will take six to nine months to complete. Net debt should broadly come off from the current levels of 3430, which is flat on a Q1, Q basis. So maybe that got the street a little disappointed. And um, they expect India to be, uh, you know, growing around 10 to 15 odd percent in the next couple of quarters. So they are quite positive on that. And for Realtris, which is one of their drugs under development, uh, for the US, the uh, street was probably expecting an approval in Jan 2019. It's probably pushed into the first half or second half of the year. And that's probably another disappointment uh, weighing on the stock right now. Oh, yes, there's plenty of that. Uh, uh, the US sh uh, price uh, scenario, the adware uh, not working out as planned, uh, all that and the net debt, everything is hurting the stock at the moment, 4% uh, lower on that. But, uh, you know, Page Industries, of course, takes the cake when it comes to the amount of price fall. You know, it's 5%, but it's 5% of a very large stock. So that's a 1,250 rupees fall on that stock. Overall markets in a, a bad spot, you'll have to say with a 1% uh, downtick in the mid caps, but it is still only three stocks in the red for two in the green in terms of breadth. Uh, Everready is another stock that you want to look at and see what the uh, chart is saying. Uh, the Everready uh, uh, results didn't look good. They posted an, actually a weak set of numbers in the third quarter. The company <coughs> saw a big fall in profits. That was because of a one-time exceptional cost. But even the margins were flat this time around. Amritanshu Khaitan, who's the MD of Everready Industries, joins us now uh, to talk about that. Amritanshu, thanks so much for joining us. I agree that there was a one-off this quarter which hit the profits. But even stripped of that, the margins are flat. What are the challenges that you see for Q4? Uh, the operational performance uh, for the company in its core business of batteries and flashlights has been exceptionally good. Uh, the battery category after many quarters has seen a 6.5% six, six volume and value growth and the EBITDA margin in the category has come in at its highest ever of 18%. Uh, flashlights too has recorded a EBITDA margin of around 13% for the quarter. And if you see for the 9 month, batteries is at about 17% uh, percent. Uh, this is a substantial improvement over last year. Uh, going into quarter four, I think uh, the, ca the company overall uh, should continue to see a large improvement. Last year, quarter four had an operational loss, which I don't see the case in this year, where the fourth quarter number should be substantially better, uh, taking the full year operating EBITDA to grow by 25 to 30%. Okay. 
<clears throat> you know, Amritaj, when we come to the battery business, <laughs> that's still seeing uh, uh, single-digit growth in terms of volume. You mentioned to us earlier that uh, the dumping of Chinese goods was uh, something that's impacting business. But do you expect the single-digit growth to continue? Uh, for many quarters, the battery business has been flat. Uh, it's after many quarters, at least we've seen a 6-7% growth. Uh, Bureau of Indian Standards was supposed to become mandatory uh, in October, which has now got delayed to April. Uh, we have seen imports of cheap batteries reducing in anticipation of BAIs becoming mandatory. Uh, if this does get implemented on 1st April, uh, there's no reason why battery category per se uh, shouldn't grow at a 7-8% kind of volume growth in uh, FY uh, 2021. Okay, well, um, you know, I have to ask you a little more about the battery business because there are many reports indicating that Duracell is looking to buy stake in the company. Would you like to confirm or deny that? Uh, the company is always looking at various strategic options uh, in terms of joint ventures or opportunities which would enhance value for all stakeholders. Uh, as in when any appropriate uh, decision is taken and which is material, we will inform the stock exchanges duly. Okay, you know, there are some concerns with respect to liquidity in the company, high promoter pledges. Uh, is that something shareholders need to be nervous about? Uh, the stock has fallen substantially in the past 12 months. On, on the balance sheet side, uh, we've already announced a real estate sale. Uh, the company is very clear that we want non-core assets to be disposed of and I expect uh, non-core assets to raise over 200 odd crores in the next six months which would help in deleveraging the balance sheet. Uh, regarding uh, promoter pledge, it's been there for a couple of years. It's not something which has substantially changed and uh, whatever steps we are taking at, at a promoter level, at a group level is that we would like to deleverage the whole group and uh, Hopefully in the next six to nine months, you should see a much stronger balance sheet, both at the promoter level as well as uh, for the company. Okay, then tell us about the flashlight business. I mean, what's the outlook for Q4 and what's the expectation in terms of top line and margin performance? Because even in flashlights, uh, you know, there's been some amount of pressure that you've seen operationally. Flashlight business is a steady business for the company. Our EBITDA margins are clocking between 10 to 12%. Quarter 4 is a very lean season for flashlights, but uh, going into next year, I think the category should see a 5-6% to 6 growth, uh, taking the trend of the last few years. Okay, Amritanshu, thanks a lot for joining us and uh, giving us your view on that. So, they're looking to do some non-core asset sales very soon and uh, bring down the pressure on their balance sheet. Let's take a quick break on that note. The market is still under quite a bit of pressure, actually. Almost a 1% fall on the mid-cap index. Up next, Anand Gawande, the promoter, director of Talwalkar's health clubs, will join in to talk about their numbers. Stay tuned. <laughs>